Welcome back to Cuda Confidential. We are very pleased to be joined by Barracuda defenseman Ethan Frisch. Frisch, you're back for another year official. You just signed another contract for the 24-25 season. That's got to be a relief, right, to know where you'll be, and it's a place that you're familiar with having played here last year. Yeah, it's exciting. Obviously, um, yeah, like you said, a relief to get a contract signed this early um, in the summer, and uh, I'm just excited to be back in San Jose. It's a place that I'm familiar with, know a lot of the guys, so uh, really excited to be back for another year. You're still early in your career, so I don't think guys worry too much about it, but is there maybe a little bit of, I don't know, concern or, or stress when you know you aren't signed for the following year? Is there any thoughts that go through your mind, or were you pretty confident that you end up back in San Jose? Yeah, I had a pretty good feeling um, at the end of the year that um, I might have another opportunity to come back and play in San Jose. Um, there's obviously always that stress. It's like it's your dream, right? Like, and it's kind of do or die time. Like, you want to play in the NHL. So um, get another opportunity to be in an organization like San Jose and um, hopefully get a chance to be a difference maker, be part of the solution here as we go forward in the next few years. Um so yeah, it's 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 nerve wracking, but at the same time, it's exciting and uh, felt pretty good about the season I had, and um, just excited we get it done so early. You mentioned your goal is to get to the NHL, just like every other player in the American Hockey League. To be with the same organization, meaning that you'll be on the ice with the same development coaches, you're being coached by the same coaching staff, you've got a lot of the same teammates, so there's that comfort level there as well. Is that really important too in your mind? Yeah, for sure. And and that was a huge part of kind of my decision to be back is I'm, I'm very comfortable in San Jose. Um, love the coaching staff, love the development staff, um, everyone around the the whole organization. It's It's been great so far for me and I've, I've loved every second of it. So um, it was a pretty easy decision to come back when the opportunity arose. Um, I feel it's a good place, a good opportunity for me to hopefully um, make my dreams come true there and play in the NHL. So obviously focused on, you know, winning at the American League level. Um, I think last year was a good reminder of that. Just, you know, we all want to win. So um, that comes first and foremost, and um, that'll help everyone achieve their dreams. Speaking of winning uh, at the AHL level, I know one of your former teammates, former Shark prospect Jasper Weatherby is still playing. Ozzy Weisblatt still playing, both members of the Milwaukee Admirals. I'm sure you're following the NHL playoffs. Have you followed any of the AHL playoffs uh, as well? Yeah. Yeah, I've been looking at uh, a little bit, probably not as close as I should be, uh, following more of the NHL playoffs. But, uh, you know, I check in here and there, and I, I see that their matchup against Coachella, is that right? Yeah. So that'll be exciting to see how, like, people from different divisions match up against them because they obviously had a really good team this year. So um, it'll be fun to see um, some people I've played with, obviously Ozzy, and then uh, past teammate like Jasper, see them compete and, you know, hopefully see if they can keep going here. Do you find yourself still communicating on a regular basis with a lot of your former college teammates? I know college teams are pretty close. You guys are kind of growing up together. You're going to school together. You have a lot of, you know, things in common, uh, given the fact that you're within the same school. Do you, do you keep those relationships to this day? Yeah, I think uh, college, it's a pretty special place, especially like your classmates, um, people that I live with for four years and um, literally go to class with and practice. You spend your life with them pretty much for four years. So. I'm very close with them, close with a lot of other people too. Um, past teammates years older than me or years younger than me up to, you know, few few years either way. So you're friends with like six, seven age groups of people, which is was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I say pretty close, some closer than others, but um, everyone tries to, everyone's busy. Like a lot of people are playing at the next level. They're starting life. They're, you know, getting married, having kids. So people are busy, but you try to stay in touch as much as you can. You mentioned that you had a, a good feeling that you'd probably be back with the Barracuda this next season. At the end of the year, you have exit meetings. I know Anthony Vincent mentioned something similar to me. He got a pretty good feeling at the end of the year. They had flowing things to say about his game. Did you get a, a similar vibe during the exit meetings with Joe Will and Todd Marchant that they wanted you back and that you were probably going to be back with this team? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it was it was a situation where I think they they were happy with how I played. They thought it exceeded expectations. What they thought, you know, I I might have been this year. Um, kind of came into the organization as more of like that bubble guy. Um, I don't know if many people realize, but I was sent down to Wichita for a day, and then came back early in the season. It was like a really strange thing. It, some of our teammates actually, funny enough, didn't even realize I was gone. They're like, "Oh, you were gone for a day," and so it's like I started off as kind of that bubble guy, and I um you know, I think I exceeded their expectations this year and they expressed that in the meetings and um, yeah, they went well. So I, I had a good feeling that, you know, this might be a spot I might be back, but 
you also never know after that, like they could think you played great and you're just not in the plans anymore. So it's, I'm very thankful for the opportunity to be back because I know it's a big thing. It's really hard to earn a, a second pro contract. It's funny you say that. I don't think I realized that you were sent down to Wichita. Sometimes you think these things are paper transactions, uh, digital transactions. So you actually had to make a flight to Wichita and then come back. So I was, yep, I right after practice, it was a development day. Um, so they're kind of like all over, everyone's on a different page. So no one, like you're not at a team practice. So like it was just defensemen on the ice. And after practice, um, I had a conversation with a uh, coach and he said, yeah, we're going to send you to Wichita. Like we had a lot of defensemen at the time. We want you to play games. So um, went down there for a day, got there, went to sleep immediately, woke up, went to practice. After practice, I was pretty tired from the travel. They took a nap, woke up from my nap to a text saying I have a flight coming back. So I was there for one practice. I actually had just enough time to load up uh, a full load of groceries. So that was awesome to get a full load of gro groceries for uh, the week. And then, uh, yeah, I came right back. So um, pretty crazy, but that's pro hockey. It's, uh, you know, it's a lot of things happen and a lot of transactions. You just got to take the opportunities when you get them. I, I guess if you go through an experience like that, it's in your mind that it could happen again. But is that something that you give much thought to that you could be going up and down at any given moment? Or do you just try to kind of focus on what's in front of you? Well, it's it's a tough thing to balance, especially as a young player, because you try not to think about it, obviously. Um, and I think I really had to try not to think about it right away. Then after it happened for a day, I'm actually kind of thankful it did because it was almost like a weight off my shoulders. Like, oh, like it. I was excited to play in Wichita. Like I, I had that practice, um, was hopefully going to play big minutes, maybe some power play time. And uh, we had three games in the weekend. It was like, Oh sweet. Like I get to play three games. We like hockey at some point, like we all love playing hockey. So uh, playing three games and being excited about some playing opportunities. I, you know, I was, I was excited to go. And when I got back, it was like, okay, like it's obviously you don't, you want to be higher up. You want to be in the American league or the NHL. Everyone wants to be in the NHL, but um, having that happen to me, it was definitely a good growing moment. Just realizing like, oh, okay, like this isn't like your life's not over if you're <laughs> going down to the East Coast League, especially if it's for a day. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it was a good growing experience for me, for sure. I remember a, a situation last year where I think we were coming from Charlotte to Denver. We had a layover, I think, in St. Louis or something like that. And at Tumac and Yemi, as soon as we landed in Colorado, it was a long travel day. He gets word that he's going back to Wichita. He has to get back on a flight. So that's just kind of lifestyle. It's not all that uh, glorious at times. Um, but I guess, as you mentioned, you go down to Wichita and it can seem like a death sentence. But you get there and the coaching staff is great. The staff is great. There's good people there. It's a good league. Um, maybe not uh, as bad as, as one might think. You get there, you experience it. Luckily for you, you didn't have to stick around too long and you came back to the AHL. I want to talk about this last season. You led the team of plus minus. You had a really solid season for a guy who, as you mentioned, you were a bubble guy in some degree, whether you were going to be in the East Coast League or in the AHL. So how do you feel about your years? You've had time to reflect. Uh, what do you think as you think back on your freshman season? Yeah, I, I like you said, I, I think it was good. I went through a lot in the first season from, you know, going through my first main camp tryouts um kind of making the team then getting sent down for a day coming back up once i finally got myself a roster spot then i got injured then i got back then i got injured and then i had to battle my way back in the lineup so i feel like i i dealt with a lot of adversity especially in the first half of the season but i think that really just helped me um grow and take every opportunity i could get like every day just trying to get a little bit better and really just focusing on my process. Um, I try to remember, like, just try to get 1% better each day. And that compounds, like, if you can just get a little bit better every day, it'll take you to new heights. And that's what I tried to focus on and uh, continue to focus on here. But yeah, I felt good about the season. Um, obviously, it wasn't great as a team. We didn't make playoffs. And obviously, we want to make playoffs. But um, I felt more confident as the year went on and adjusted to the pro style of game. And uh, yeah, I was overall pretty happy with the year. Maybe it's a world one. Maybe you're just, again, living in the moment. But for young players, you mentioned you have rookie camp. We had the rookie showcase. I think we went to Vegas this past year. So there's a lot going on even before you get into the NHL camp. So it can be a long kind of road to the start of the season. Did you find it, I wouldn't say cumbersome, but just challenging? It's a long training camp for the younger players. Oh, it's very challenging, not just physically, but mentally too. Like you're 
especially for a guy just coming in um, for your first camp, like you don't really know what to expect. Um, so there's the mental grind of it. Like, how does this all go? How does this all shake out? Um, and then the physical grind, like it's obviously very tough. Um, everyone's, you know, coaches, staff, they're trying to knock you into shape to a certain degree, make sure you're ready to play games coming here in a month. So, um, yeah, it's pretty tough and, uh, sore pretty much every night, not comfortable walking for most of the month, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good for growth mentally and physically, uh, as I mentioned. So, um, thankful for it, but yeah, it's definitely a grind. Yeah, I'm sure you're you're drinking out of a fire hose, just trying to digest all the information <laughs> physically on the ice, but also mentally too, with with all the things they're throwing at you. Who was a veteran player this past year who kind of took you under their wing, or somebody that you looked up to and kind of helped that process along? I think we had a lot of great leaders this year, and it's hard to pick just one. Um, like we had leadership from a lot of older guys, and even a lot of just second year returning guys. Um, I learned a lot from like a Scott Sabern. I'm just watching the way he does things, his process, making sure his body's ready day in and day out. Guy that's married with kids, like has a lot of other things going on in life. Like he's got to have stresses going on other than just the rank and seeing how he goes about his business is, uh, you know, it's a good learning experience for someone like me. So I'd say he's definitely someone, uh, Cole Castle's having a kid this season, his first kid. It's like dealing with a lot of stuff, um, exciting times for him. Um, but being able to, perform when you're at the rink and still being a great dad to a newborn kid. So it's, it's pretty cool learning from these guys and you just realize everyone's in a different spot in the program at pro game. Um, and I think that's, what's different from college is like everyone has different motivations. Everyone has different things going on in their lives, but the bottom line is you got to perform when you're at the rink. So um, you, you take bits and pieces from everyone um, as how they go about it. Like, Oh, this would work for me this isn't the situation I'm in with this guy. So it's like, you're taking bits and pieces from everyone. I feel like. What was the adjustment like going from quote unquote, the big man on campus, a four year player in college to being basically a freshman again at the professional level. I remember personally for me, you go from high school to college and it's a weird transition because you were the oldest kid, then you're the youngest. So what was that like for you? Yeah. I'm coming from North Dakota. I was, you know, four years there kind of a hometown kid like I only live an hour away so knew a lot of people on campus uh two-year captain there so obviously it was it was a great time best years of my life like awesome and then coming back and same feeling as you were when you were a freshman in college it's um to some degree it's exciting because I think that's when a lot of your growth happens um and you can feel it a lot more um in those like first two years where you are the new guy um you're not comfortable like at all, especially at the start of the year, like you're never comfortable. Like, so I think that's where the growth happens really. And um, so it's, it's different, but it's exciting because you get to learn new things. Like I learned so many new things this year. Uh, like I said, I love the coaching staff. They taught me a lot of new things. So what was your favorite part about living in San Jose? The weather by far. Um, like I'm from Minnesota. So it's like, I remember when I got there at the end of my senior season when I signed my ATO, I signed my contract at that time too, but I came for those last 10 games and we had a fan fest event and people were asking me like what I thought about the Bay area. And I said, Oh, the weather's just awesome. And they're like, are you kidding? Like this sucks. There's been rain like two of the past three days. I was like, I would take this any day of the week over <laughs> what we have back in Minnesota. Like, I don't think some people understand like what like flat 60 mile per hour winds, like freezing colds, like the tundra out here sometimes. So the weather was definitely my favorite part about living in the Bay Area. I know you had mentioned to me that one of the great things about being an alumnus of North Dakota is they let you come back and use the facilities. And they have some state-of-the-art facilities. Have you done that so far? You plan on going back up there? You said you're only about an hour away. Yeah, so they're great. Their alumni program there is just awesome. They treat us amazing. I still have my key card for the rink, and they keep it on as long as you're still playing professional hockey like you can come in whenever so full access facilities the ice um i haven't gone up this summer at the end of last summer i went up for a month i'll likely go up at the end of the summer for a week or two and pop in when i can but yeah it's only an hour so i still have buddies there um like my roommate one of my roommates actually both my roommates are there uh judd caulfield carson albrecht we played against judd caulfield quite a bit this year in san diego um he lives in grand forks still so go up and see him and my other roommate and uh, able to work out and stuff. So 
it's pretty easy for me to hop up there and we're pretty lucky because I have access to a lot of things there. Well, you're kind enough to join us before a round of golf. That's pretty customary for hockey players this time of year to get on. the links. I got to ask, how's the game at this point of the summer? Uh, it's about, it, it's going well. It's definitely getting better. Uh, I have a big golf trip that I go on with uh, my brother and a couple of buddies uh, mid June. So you definitely want to be dialed in for that. So my, I wouldn't say my game's peaking right now, but it's in the right direction. So hopefully we can get it to peak here in the next few weeks. Where are you guys going? Uh, we'll play Village Green here. Oh, my! on my golf trip, we go to Brainerd every year. So Brainerd, Minnesota. I did mention, I should say, Minnesota in the winter is terrible. Minnesota in the summer, I don't think there's a better place to be. Coming from a Minnesotan, like Lakes Country, Brainerd. They have a bunch of beautiful courses. Uh, one of the courses we're playing, uh, they host a Canadian PGA event this year. So that'll be exciting to play that. Um, a few other really nice courses, so. I'll be I mean, saying we'll get a little Airbnb. So there's a reason why guys go back home during the offset, and that's the best time. You're cherry picking at this point now, though, because right. you get you know the best seasons uh, getting to go back home. You're around family. How important is it for you, especially after a, a season like you just had? There's a lot going on. You dealt at times with injury. You, mentally, it's taxing. It's a much longer year than your college uh, season was. How important is it for you to step away from the game a little bit, kind of recharge, get your mind off of it? Yeah, it's huge. I think, um, you know, when I was a kid, I don't really remember. I was a multi-sport athlete. I played tons of tons of sports, but I don't really ever remember taking long breaks from hockey or like, if anything, it was like a week, like I would say off the ice. But um, that's when, you know, hockey really isn't very stressful at all at that age. Um, there's obviously some stress involved. Like it is a job now. We still love the game and it's still a game, but it is a job. Like there are stresses that come with it. And uh being able to step away for, you know, a few weeks and let the body recharge. Your body goes through a lot, um, just resetting, getting back to a base level human body that doesn't have bumps and bruises from shot blocks and hits and stuff. Is It's pretty important. So then you're just recharged. Like you're excited to get back on the ice again, just like when you were a kid or the start of the season. So uh, I took a few weeks and it went really well for me. I get to coach. I have a little brother who still plays and, I uh, was out on the ice with him this morning, got to coach him a little bit. So that's stuff I love and um, just helps you find your love for the game again. It gets to be a grind in a pro season and um, taking that little bit of time to recharge is very important. Is your little brother a defenseman as well? He's a defenseman. So he's 13 years old. Um, so he, he'll likely be a defenseman, but they're more so just playing hockey at this point. So um, we'll see though. So he's, uh, he's about as big as me already. So, which isn't really saying much, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's a good little player. You said that you've been watching some of the Stanley cup playoffs. We're down to four teams could, I believe have a team eliminated as soon as tomorrow. Um, but uh, who's your pick to win the Stanley cup, man, it's close. It's uh, I honestly think it could be anyone's right now. Um, I think it's hard to bet against Florida right now. I think they're just firing on all cylinders. The best roster left, I honestly think Dallas, though, with Ottinger and Nett, um, I think he's playing really well. And they just have their forwards, forward depth is out of this world. So we'll see. It's exciting to see. Um, my pick right now would probably be Florida. I just think they're just blazing hot right now. So we'll see, though. It's interesting because it's not a situation where there's a team that you don't feel like deserves to be there or just went on some playoff run. All these teams were very good in the regular season um, and they're very deep and very, very talented. It's funny. Edmonton's probably the thinnest team, but they've got two of the best players in the world. So, but you have uh, Connor McDavid, so anything can happen. It, yeah, that's the yeah. thing. <laughs> All is balanced when, when you've got uh, Connor McDavid and her team. Well, enjoy your golf game. Enjoy the links. We're, we're excited to have you back. It was fun to watch you this year. Just your, your compete and your your willingness to really do anything for the team. And, you know, we're, we're selfish as broadcasters when we get a good interview as well. Um, and you were great uh, whenever we asked you to, to provide some sound bites as well. So look forward to seeing you, Frischie, uh, whether it's development camp or, or training camp. We look forward to it. But welcome back and uh, congratulations. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Yeah, thanks. Only thanks for having me on. Excited to be back. All right, man. Appreciate you. Have a good uh, good round. Yeah, thanks, Noli. Take care. Right, Take it easy.